Hey folks, Jeremy here. A quick reminder that uh, Duck Feeds annual streaming charity event, Duck Stream, is coming up this weekend. If you're listening to this on the public feed, the day it comes out, uh, which is a Wednesday, it's this weekend. It's this Saturday and Sunday. So run, don't walk to twitch.tv slash duck feed uh, and go check out all of the cool streams. Uh, donate some money. We're raising money for our trans kids again. Uh, it's going to be an awesome time. I will be there. Gary will be there. Just a whole large amount of people will be there uh, streaming video games and shenanigans for your pleasure. Please go check it out. Duckfeed.tv slash Duckstream. Jeremy Greer. And I'm Gary Butterfield. And this is Days of Future Cast, the podcast that is all about our favorite X-Man, Mr. Sinister. Uh, Gary, this, is, this, this episode of the next one is going to be about Uncanny X-Men, which I think wraps up our Sinister involvement for now with this whole Phoenix situation. Mm -hmm. And I am so happy that they're back to back in our, our reading order because this were, just was just a blast to read from back. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to make a controversial statement here. Uh, I, I got to read this run, this Karen Gillan, you know, a run of Ben Kenny X-Men, because I think this is the real uh, Grant Morrison follow-up thing. A lot of people said it was Wolverine and the X-Men, and yes, that has to do with the school, and I love the school, and I think it's really important to the Grant Morrison run. In terms of just the ideas, though, I think this is more successful. Yeah. Uh, the, I, th this is just full of just fucking awesome big ideas. Unit? <laughs> yeah unit man. big unit uh i'm interested i want to know where unit's going yeah. you know i thought unit maybe was sinister in the last uh issue mm -hmm. unit is not i don't think i mean it still could actually happen uh they kill all the other sinisters but maybe they had a sinister on board like their uh their tiny little yellow uh <laughs> suction cup yeah, sign absolutely on yes. the X -Jet, <laughs> love, that, love that love that yeah. <laughs> little baby yeah. with a little diamond <laughs> to, to sinister on board yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sinister on board that has to exist uh, right like that's that has to like going. that's on ebay somewhere i i sinister on board is real good um but yeah this is this is wonderful i, lo I love this issue i love the x one and the next one features psylocke wearing danger like a suit that's so stupid, but I still like it. Dude, it's better it's than it is better than anything we've seen Danger do up to this point. Like a hundred a hundred percent better than anything she's done. Like that is more of a cool ability than we have seen her do from the from the jump. Like I love that. I thought that was cool as shit. A, a character design where she looks so much better if she was just made into clothes. Um, that's what a what a horrible character i feel like that's just that me in my 30s at this point right like you just you're oh just, yeah you're not you're not yeah. just we should just make that into clothes well <laughs> one of the things if you made me into clothes is that i would no longer get older and I, i'll stop looking worse that's true that's you true know? i i'm i'm kind of i i'm close to like peaking i don't i don't think i looked that good as a young man okay you know i think i think i look better a little bit older mm -hmm. uh but i i'm gonna start going downhill here pretty quick I don't think this this gravy train is going to last forever. Uh oh, I'm getting a notification you know? in the chat that uh, Buffalo Bill is furiously masturbating about this. We need to move <laughs> on quickly before he skins us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> before he spends in his jacksy. Uh, this cover is really great. Yes, uh, Sinister's got a big shit eating grin, and he has a phoenix uh, like a falcon mm -hmm. on like a falconer's glove with a chain. Um, a chain. Yeah, and we're gonna kind of pick up from where we left off with uh, so. Uh, up to this, the five Phoenix X Men were going to uh, Sinister's L London version, <laughs> a town mm -hmm. of uh, that's located underneath the uh, Earth's surface in Alaska, and they left their kind of core group behind. So behind us, we've got uh, or back at Utopia, we've got Danger, Psylocke, Magneto, and Storm. Just kind of being like, you guys, 
you guys if you guys seen Game of Thrones or like <laughs> you watching Are you guys caught up? You watching Succession? <laughs> like that seems like a pretty the, <laughs> Yeah, everyone's talking about that. Everyone everyone forgot about Ted Lasso and has moved on to Succession. I bet Magneto um, would fucking hate Ted Lasso. Like <laughs> well, Gary fucking hates Ted Lasso. Gary, I've never you've seen never it. Seen it. You, you it. hate the internet's reaction to Ted Lasso. I think Magneto would absolutely yeah. despise everything about uh, Ted Lasso. So that's true. Uh, they get up. They've been left behind, and, and he's like, "Well, we can't just sit here. You know, we have to go see what's happening. We, you know, we who knows what could be happening." And we cut over to this double page splash of the Phoenix Five destroying uh, Sinister London. Yep. Um, um, pretty cool looking. Inside Castle Sinister, we've got some science sinisters uh, setting up some uh, Cyclops clones um, to basically create a Cyclops gun, um, which is a concept that I never, ever, ever get tired of. They did this in, um, was it Dark Phoenix, the most recent X-Men movie? They did this where they just turned him into a gun for a while and that was fucking dope as hell. Like, I just, yeah, I I just, dude, I'm (laughs) I'm into this. Uh, I, I, I like this too. They just don't zap Namor, uh, you know, and they're, they're just like kind of hitting him the, the, the one time, uh, this is not going to work for a long time here. Uh, and this is setting up, uh, you know, uh, Namor jumping the gun mm-hmm. and attacking, which is part of Sinister's plan. Um, Cyclops is saying that, you know, this is dumb. We don't do this. Uh, you know, we, that's where the, he's going to be in the castle, but if we struck him, it's pointless. Like he's just going to teleport somewhere else. It's like a Hydra. So we have to take this entire civilization apart. Um, looking at this little map that he's summoned up yeah. using the Phoenix force. It's very funny to me that there. there's just a running bit of, uh, specifically using Cyclops's Cyclops clones to hit Namor when he's least expecting it. <laughs> it's just very funny. Mm-hmm. Like, sitting in the back. <laughs> it's just, it never gets old for me. So, <clears throat> Um, they, uh, so he, de- he deploys people out different parts of the, this world to go destroy them. Uh, Sinister sends the spawn. Um, these are amalgams of Scalp Hunter, mm-hmm. uh, who is one of the, uh, the Marauders. Yes. The, the original guys who went and took Angel's wings, but mutated together. Uh, and, uh, the Phoenix five are taking them out. We go back inside to where, uh, Sinister is getting a report. He's like, Hey, the, you know, the, the Marauder spawn are, are barely doing anything. And I love, he's like, I, you know, I suppose Scalp Hunter and friends were never that good by themselves. I probably shouldn't expect they'd be better on mass, you know, like they sucked. It, just a bunch of them was also going to suck. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so now, uh, Sinister says, Hey, if they're not coming over here to the mountain, it's time to send the mountain to them. And then the best panel of this thing, uh, the this is incredible Castle Sinister yeah. rises up, and it is revealed that Sinister has made a clone of Krokoa uh, and, and turned yeah. his cast and turned that into a castle for himself. Why is Sinister the best X Men villain? Like this guy fucking rules. It, it's new. <laughs> it, 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 it's new because I, I promise. Like the last time prior to this, I read Sinister. He did, did not do this cool ass shit. No, no. <clears throat> Like somebody just decided, like just ascended him. Like somebody decided, like you know what, this guy is great. You know, this costume design has always been great. Let's make him cool, yeah. as opposed to just like every other sinister comic I've read. He just sits in a room with a bank of monitors and says, "Finally, the sum of DNA will be mine." <laughs> and then that's it. Like there's no there's no flair to it. He doesn't do anything. He just sends like the shittiest mutants he can find to go fight the X Men. Oh you know, man, uh, it's, it's silly. It's still fucking. It's just so fucking hilarious. And he had Gambit be in charge of his HR. <laughs> like he's like Gambit will find me the best mutants. Absolutely. And he put together fucking Marauders. Um, you know the X Men are like surprised by this, and Cyclops even goes so far as to say, "We have infinite power," and this dude is still surprising. It's like, how is this possible? <laughs> this guy just. Wow. And then as soon as he says that, Namor gets hit with the Cyclops blast. <laughs> 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 he's like well then we should and this zaps him uh he says you know counter it you know they're gonna blast uh the stuff and and head in um you know they uh they got another hit on the atlantean you know they're trying to get them to storm the castle mm-hmm. for reasons as we'll, we'll find out um here uh colossus grows to giant size and fights the the castle that's on top of krakoa's back i love this in the city awesome like, this is great He's holding the castle up, and then thousands of little gambits start coming out going, Ma shit, Ma shit, Ma shit, Ma shit, Ma shit, Ma shit, 
<laughs> and he's just like, Gambit. Oh, like, man. Like, very confused. And then Sinister's like, Gambit lived only for his regular La Petite Mort, which is an orgasm. With a few t- genetic tweaks, I'll give him a grande. <laughs> What the fuck? (laughs) What did we do to deserve this? Oh my god, dude. It's so good. The grin on Sinister's face as he says this, like it's the most excited he's had. Just the most exciting idea that he's had. He hasn't he's been just dying to share this with somebody that would appreciate it. He's playing it like he's playing a tabletop game Mm -hmm. and just coming up with the most fun ideas. And just have it like, you know, no consequence. Like he's just having fun. Uh, and it's a cool uh, uh, thing that he's done is he's making the gambits into living bombs. They just charge themselves and run at Cyclops. Like that's pretty cool. And <laughs> like, they, it's funny. He said that he'll give him a grande orgasm and uh, it's it's effective. Like this is great. This yeah. Is, all things to all people like a bunch of tiny little or not tiny but a bunch of normal sized gambits like just blow up a giant sized colossus to the point that he just falls down <laughs> like he doesn't even shriek yeah. he just falls down <laughs> it's so good uh and they just keep pummeling with with tiny gambits uh here i love that this is happening and then magic is just, like unacceptable <laughs> and just sets up a bunch of portals to send all the gambits into the uh the the uh cyclops gun i really like the idea that she was just like we can't this is not allowed like you you were embarrassing yeah. me peter <laughs> the indignity <laughs> peter come on man what the hell <laughs> i haven't been more embarrassed say? by you since the tractor incident okay get you get up <laughs> <laughs> um they uh and then they're like they're shooting him and they're like we 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 have to get the cosmic shot loose the cannonballs and then a bunch of cannonball comes out literal cannonballs like uh, clones of cannonball yeah. just with fuck this is fucking great um meanwhile Namor wakes up from his last blast um <laughs> and is like this is enough I'm not going to wait uh I am just going to charge the castle which is what they have been waiting on this entire time um and he charges into the throne room where he finds sinister uh, and not expecting to find a bunch of Madeline clones. Yes. Uh, and this was the plan for the Madeline cro- clones. Uh, we see for Cyclops, uh, he disappears. Mm-hmm. He loses Namor on his like psychic link. Uh, just we'll find this out in a second, but we'll go ahead and just say it now. Uh, the reason why he had killed Madeline was Madeline was a Phoenix uh, host yes. before. Mm-hmm. So he has found a way to suck the Phoenix out and put it into a former host. This is so fucking um, cool. I, I just like, this is g- extremely good ideas all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a great plan. Uh, Cyclops calls in on Emma. She's fighting a wheat field because she was out to the countryside and it's all exploding cows that explode in acid and vomit. Fucking um, delightful. Delight, right. Absolutely. Very delightful. good. Everybody likes the cow level her. from Dablo too, right? Like everybody likes that. Yeah. Yeah. There's no cow level. Uh, and she's like, is there nothing this vile man won't turn into a weapon? You know, they've been preparing this entire thing, uh, from behind her. She, she, she hears, you know, there's nothing harlot and then also gets her Phoenix force sucked out. Yep. Um, magic um, calls for a retreat, uh, but it's too late. Um, by the time that happens, her and Colossus both get sucked out and it's just leaving Cyclops, uh, and Cyclops turns around when he sees the uh, or when he starts hearing uh madeline the madeline clones there's three of these um coming towards him uh and he tries to attack them and it just explodes and looks like it wipes out most of sinister london um but we're gonna see very quickly that that's not necessarily the case yeah yeah uh so so we uh we cut over um you know he's in this crater this is they've sucked out his power Sinister walks up and is like, you know, marrying to wealth and influence, most of all, you know, and most of all power. It's a fine English tradition, you know, uh, basically the, he married into the Madelines and he got this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we cut back to our, our non Phoenix stuff, X-Men, you know, uh, who are looking in on this, uh, they're going to be the rescue team. So a clever, you know, we talked about it the last episode, how it'd be cool to deal with them having a resentment. Mm hmm you know, the non Phoenix X-Men, um, them rescuing the, uh, the Phoenix X-Men is a cool way to do this. Yes. I think, um, you know, because they're, they're no slouches like this Magneto and storms on this fucking team. You know, the, these are some of those powerful X-Men. It's just, uh, they don't have the Phoenix. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also want to just point out real quick because sinister is like, you know, marrying into wealth. It's a fine English tradition. And then he says, I highly recommend it. Also bigamy. Just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sinister. Yeah. Multiple clone wives. 
Yeah. Jesus. Not an English tradition. That big of me. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, just great. Like what, what turns sinister into something so good. We didn't, we don't deserve this. We do not deserve this um, at all. Yeah. This is, this is no. some of the best sinister has ever been in my mind. I, I, I might go back and just start reading this run. Uh, you know, just for fun. It's really good. It's um, it's really good. I, when I was, yeah. I, th- I think I've told you a couple of times, like when I was catching up with all X Men things leading up to AVX, uh, this was one of my favorite things that they were doing. This and the um, Generation X stuff was really, really fucking good. That uh, I, for some reason lately, like all I wanted to do was play video games. Okay. <laughs> you know, like uh, it like non work. I got ahead on work video games so I can play my own games, mm-hmm. and it feels really refreshing. It feels like I haven't been able to even though I play video games all the time, it feels like I haven't been able to play a game for like a year. Okay. So sitting down to play something that is not for work has felt really refreshing. So I have not been doing too much other stuff. I, um, the, uh, but I need to get back into other stuff. I, uh, I have been having a really hard time just finding a game to latch onto. Like I've been bouncing back and forth between a bunch of different games and just not clicking with anything. Um, I impulse purchased, uh solar ash today based on a headline that mm. will hughes wrote on the av club uh mm. say he called it there's your first mistake tony hawks pro skaters shadow of the colossus i think and i was just like okay fine okay that's okay you got me will you got me i'll spend 40 dollars. okay uh so i'm gonna try that this weekend but i don't know i don't know what's happening i ended up seeing the the uh another headline about that game where someone was like this is not good and that it colored me. Mm-hmm. And then I saw Will's uh, thing. But I will just end up asking Will about it. Yeah. Because I want to get the, the the real stuff. I got the, the, non, I got the one-two uh, punch headline. because uh, Klepik posted like a, just a, a short video of like a weird, cool-looking boss fight. And was like, this is, this is just wild and crazy. I think he called it like a violent Mario 64 or a violent Mario Galaxy or something. Um, all that stuff sounds really interesting yeah and the, the boss yeah. fight looked cool and then i immediately like immediately after that saw will's headline it was like okay well my, my stylus has not come to get me from the front yet so i'm just going to buy the game on my phone it's, <laughs> it was yeah. it was down to that yeah. if, if donna had showed up three minutes earlier i would not own this game <laughs> <laughs> so donna cost me 40 dollars plus tip <laughs> the the um yeah i i uh the other thing I'm trying to do, uh, gaming wise, because we're just talking about whatever now. The uh, uh, I got to finish that room VR. It's yeah. real neat. It's gonna. Mm-hmm. I think it's gonna be the thing that unlocks the rest of the series for me, like a series I've liked, but I've only beat the first one and then made my way like an hour into all the other ones. Mm-hmm. Like I, I run out of steam, I get stuck and get frustrated. Uh, this is the one that's latching on. I uh, I have not played the VR one. I'm uh, I've played all of the other ones multiple times. I will say that um the first one is obviously very simple. It was like a proof of like it was like one of the first like iPad games, right? So they were really really focusing on that yeah. like I'm going to touch this thing and drag it out. Uh the second one is like more of that and good. And then the third one, they get into the fucking weeds with the story and the lore. And it's has a bunch of disconnected puzzles as opposed to having everything kind of like in one room. Uh, and then that was not near as successful. But then the fourth one, which is not room four, it's like dollhouse or something. I don't remember what it's called. Is fan fucking tastic. I love that one. It's one of my favorite nice. series. So yeah, it, it's a, it's a, it's a great set of, set of games. I just have to like, if I, if I get really stuck and I get frustrated, and I've decided I want to to cheat, but I don't have my phone mm-hmm. near me. I don't have anything like near me to like look it up or I don't feel like it or something. There's any friction there. That's a real easy way for me to fall off of a puzzle. Have you, uh, have you um, played Machinarium by chance? I did. Yeah. I really like, I like Machinarium. I, I, I don't love it as much as like most of my peers do, but I did like it. I am. Um, I'm more in love with like the styling on that, like the art and the sound and stuff. Uh, but I really like mm-hmm. their little hint system where if you wanted to hint, you had to play a little like real basic shoot 'em up <laughs> to get a, to get access to like mm-hmm. one single hint. And that made me like way more engaged with the game other than just picking up my phone to talk, to try to find the, the solution to the puzzle or whatever. Yeah. Like scroll through two pages of just people showing entire walkthroughs on YouTube. Exactly. Yeah. Stuff. Like I, get, I don't like, want to do that. Answer. Um, so yeah, having it in game, I think it was, was really cool. And I wish, I wish more games would adopt stuff like that. So. Oh, totally. Did you ever play, um, Thimbleweed park? I didn't No, It's, it's been on my list for a long time. It's a, it's a classic adventure game. So the, the puzzle is not quite as direct, mm-hmm. but the way they do hints in that is there's a, a, a phone in the game. You can have a cell phone or you can go uh, to, to a pay phone and there's a hint line. Oh, cool. That you call <laughs> in the game. And it's a really good hint system. Like 
you know, hey, what are you trying to do? And you, you have this big, it counts for like most things. And you can be like, oh, did you do this yet? Like it's conversational. Mm-hmm. It ends up feeling like somebody kind of talking you through yeah. uh, it without wanting to spoil it totally. It's really good. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I am. That makes me more intrigued about that game, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's good. It's, it's a great game. It's uh, the, the ending of it takes a really big swing. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you are familiar with the creators, other games, it will hit harder. What else did they, I'm not, I don't uh, remember what else did they make. Um, so Maniac Mansion, uh, Monkey Island. Oh yeah, yeah, Monkey yeah, Island yeah. Too. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's got, got some of that DNA. I, I love that game. That's one of my favorite, like old school graphic adventure games. Um, yeah, I'm do a replay. I've been listening to the soundtrack a lot. Ooh. So anywho, Hey, if, if you want to hear uh, this, has been more everyone about shares games. or Spotify for some reason. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm like, it's that time of year. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thanks to everybody who's, who sent in things, say, showing duck feed stuff on their Spotify as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it. extremely yeah. cool seeing people. Um, it's just number one, it's really weird to me that people listen to podcasts on Spotify at all, <laughs> but, uh, sure. You may not know this. And, um, but, uh, did you know that you can log in as your podcast to get your podcast Spotify wrapped? No. Yeah, like if you log in Interesting. with the like with like create a new account using the um email address that is like the contact of the show um and then you can claim the podcast and you get Spotify stats which I did not care about at all but they did an actual wrapped uh thing just like they did for like just your normal music stuff um which is how I found out that like a hundred something people listen to monster of the week on their birthday <laughs> this year, Aww, which is just nice. a weird stat. Like I don't, I don't like, that's the kind of stats yeah. I needed in my it life. Mean anything. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just, it's just cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> that's great. Patreon.com slash duck TV. Uh, do all that stuff. Uh, tell your friends. We'll be back with, uh, more uncanny X-Men and delightful sinister in just a couple of days. Um, boss. Um, boss.